does your body feel like in zero gravity? What inspires you to become an astronaut? What exercise do you do? And do you sweat in space? What do yo-yo work in microgravity? So it works. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Oakland Community College and Lake Orion High School. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Do I repeat? Station, this is Oakland Community College and Lake Orion High School. How do you hear me? Hello, is that Professor Martin? We've got you loud and clear. I'm Spencer Martin, and I've taught well over 15,000 students at Oakland Community College since it opened in 1965. There are no other former students who have looked down on me from such a great height <coughs> as astronaut Drew Feustel. I'm proud to have had him as a student. Hi, Drew. Hi, Ricky. Thank you for joining 200 students from Drew's two Michigan schools, Lake Orion High School and Oakland Community College. We are at OCC's Auburn Hills campus with over 1,000 students participating in other classrooms. Now let's get to the student questions. Have fun. I'm Sam. I'm from Lake Orion High School. My question is for Drew. How did your time as a Lake Orion Dragon help prepare you for this mission? Well, Sam, uh, what it taught me was that I needed to try to do better. I, uh, I struggled in high school a little bit and didn't do uh, as well as I would have liked. And I realized early on, uh, shortly after my time there, that if I wanted to achieve uh, some great and fantastic goals, like becoming an astronaut, that I needed to do better. And uh, it set me up for success. I had some uh, great experiences at Lake Orion High School, and that was a, a very uh, um, impressionable part of my life. But I was glad to be there. I'm proud to be a graduate. And I was lucky uh, from after Lake Orion to move on to uh, greater things. Hi, I am Cassie from Lake Orion High School. And my question is for Ricky. What kind of medical testing does an astronaut have to go through to be physically and mentally fit for duty? Um, just about everything the doctors can think of. Uh, it starts from the time we're selected and it doesn't really stop uh, pre-flight. And in fact, uh, this week, uh, Drew and I spent before lunch uh, time taking images of the back of each other's retinas. So it's a kind of continual process. We want to make sure people are healthy before, they're fl before they fly. Uh, we want to have a baseline of data for when they fly, and then we want to collect data before, during and after the mission to see how uh, the, this environment changes us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Peyton from Oakland Community College, and my question is for Drew. What does Expedition 55 currently entail for you personally? Is there an area you're focusing on, or is it more of a group effort in all aspects? That's a great question. I would say that uh, our time uh, spent here in space really is a group effort. Uh, we have a number of experiments, uh, research, and uh, also uh, repairs and modifications that we make to the space station on a regular basis. And we work together uh, on different days. We can all be doing some of the same tasks that another had been doing on, uh, on a day previous. Uh, so a lot of times we'll pick up where another astronaut has left off. And during the day, if we're not done with our activities or if we are done, we'll help the other, uh, our fellow crewmates uh, finish up their work for the day. So uh, we try to uh, work together and make sure all the, all the tasks get done each and every day as a group. Awesome. Hi, I'm Raj. I'm from Oakland Community College, and my question is for Ricky. How will commercial and government-funded space programs cooperate or compete in the future of human space fl uh, flight? 
Yeah, it's interesting times uh, for commercial space, and um, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, we, we've been working with co uh, commercial partners for a long time, uh, and it has just continued to grow both here on the space station and also for crewed vehicles, which are going to fly to and from the space station here uh, shortly. So uh, I, I think it's going to be a big team effort. There are limited resources for space exploration. We need to use those resources together uh, to, to set out and explore the solar system. Hi, my name is Jacob from Lake Oregon High School, and my question is for Drew. Who or what do you believe was your greatest motivator in your journey to become an astronaut? What drove you? Uh, thanks for the question, Jacob. Um, actually, um, I was driven by uh, just a desire to um, to achieve the goals that I had set forth. You know, when I was young, I grew up watching a lot of uh, sci-fi and fantasy shows about space exploration, and I always thought that that was amazing and that someday humans really would explore space. And then I learned one day about the achievements of uh, my great-great-uncle uh, and some of the work that he did early in his life. It didn't have anything to do with space exploration, but uh, as, a, as a professional, he did some uh, pretty amazing, he achieved some pretty amazing goals of his own and, and that allowed me to realize that I had that, uh, those capabilities in me and that all I really needed to do was push myself and dig deep and that I could achieve anything I put, uh, put out before me. Thank you. Hello, I am Jacob from Lake Orion High School and my question is for Ricky. How do we use model organisms for research aboard the space station? Jacob, we've, we, we've been using um, uh, simple organisms on the space station for, for a while. Uh, we want things that are easy to care for. They reproduce fairly quickly. Um, they're, they're, um, we've used, I know, planaria, flatworms, uh, and drosophila. If you've taken genetics, uh, you'll know drosophila. It's just the common fruit fly. Their genome is really well understood. They reproduce very quickly, and you can really understand uh, what's going on in simple genetics and uh, even on the molecular level. So um, those are two that leap to mind. We actually have a piece of hardware, a new piece of hardware that uh, will help us with, uh, with fruit fly experiments and uh, um, better understand the environment that we live in and how it affects, how it affects a genetic, uh, your genetic makeup. Hi, I am Robert from the Lake Orion High School and my question is for Drew. Does it ever get difficult working with other people in the International Space Station when your countries aren't always on best terms politically? How do you deal with that? Uh, you know, that's a great question. Sometimes we have a hard time working with each other that aren't from different countries, but uh, for the most part, we're all here to get along. And, uh, and to be honest, uh, you know, we have two Russian crew members uh, here on the space station with us now and a Japanese colleague, Japanese uh, astronaut as well. and. Uh, between the six of us, we all have great relationships. We spend a lot of time together before we fly in space, and we spend obviously every day together while we're in space. And I would say that uh, uh, the challenges of politics on Earth really do not transfer to the International Space Station. Uh, we are all here with a common goal, and that is to uh, get the work done that we've been sent here to do. And that's how we work each and every day. And the politics is never an issue and never gets in the way. And, and we treat our, our colleagues like brothers and sisters, absolutely. Hello, I'm Steve from Oakland Community College. And my question's for Ricky. How is it sleeping in space? And is it difficult to adapt? Uh, for me personally, I think that's one of the most difficult adaptations to, to coming to space uh, is just uh, trying to sleep in the, in the absence or in a mi in microgravity environment. We, we are so used to, you know, the very, you lay down to go to sleep and here you, you, you can't. Uh, you're kind of up against a wall. You're, you, uh, um, it's, a, it's a real challenge. We actually have a sleeping bag that we use. We, I use bungees to kind of bungee myself to the wall. Um, and it just takes a little while, but probably after about a week or so, you start to sleep a lot better. And then as the mission goes along, it's you, you just, your body adapts and adjusts and you sleep fine. Good morning, my name is Marcella Carter and I'm uh, from Oakland Community College. My question is for Drew. Obviously you studied and trained for becoming an astronaut, but now that you are in the field, what is the most unexpected thing that you have experienced in space? 
I would say the thing that has been most unexpected to me being in space is the desire to want to be back on Earth. And I think that's because um, when we look down on the Earth each day, we see its great immense beauty, and, but we also know that our families and friends are down there on the planet. And so it's the, uh, it's the great dichotomy, I guess, of the astronauts is that when we're in space, uh, we want to be at home, and when we're at home, we want to be up in space. But uh, So th that was a big surprise to me is the real desire to want to be back with loved ones, uh, knowing that uh, you're home and everybody was down there on the planet. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ryan Hammond from Lake Orion High School. This question is for Ricky. After seeing events like the Challenger explosion, were you ever discouraged from becoming an astronaut? No, anytime you, you lose a crew member, Challenger, Columbia, um, back in the early Apollo program, uh, it, it's, it's a tragedy. Uh, but the, the work goes on. Uh, those, uh, those folks, I think, would be disappointed if we stopped doing what something that meant so much to them. So I think everything we do up here is, is in, in essence, a tribute to the people who have gone before us and the people that have lost their lives to make all of, all of this possible. So I, I, it didn't discourage me at all. Hi. Hi. My name is Oliver, and I'm from Lake Orion High School. And my question for Drew is, how have college experiences, work, and life experience, career choices translate into becoming a NASA astronaut? Well, I think the key is you have to decide for yourself what it is that you want to do, and that's what I did early on. I, I set a very high uh, goal for myself of, of uh, trying to become an astronaut. And, but to get here, I didn't do anything in my career that was specific to being an astronaut. I simply found something I loved, which ended up being geology and geosciences. And because I loved that work so much, I was, I was quite good at it, or I thought I was good at it, and I was able to excel in my field. And that put me at the top of, uh, of the uh, uh, individuals that were uh, also applying to be astronauts. And um, so I think the key is set your goals high, find a job that you love, and find some work that you love, and uh, that will allow you to do really well and, and make you more competitive, competitive ultimately for whatever it is you want to do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alec from Oakland Community College, and I have a question from Robin for Ricky. The space race of the 1960s serves as a catalyst for unity in our nation. How do you think a manned mission to Mars would impact our nation and international partners? That, great point. Um, yeah, the, the, the way our exploration of space has evolved, I think, uh, says a lot about the, the core values that we as humans all share. Um, the International Space Station, I think, is, gonna sh is showing us right now how we're going to go out and explore the solar system. It's going to be together, and we will be not United States astronauts or Russian cosmonauts or Japanese astronauts. We will be humans, and uh, we will explore the solar system as a species, not as, uh, as members of a political entity. And I think that's a, a real hopeful uh, vision if, for our future. I'm Jack from Lake Orion High School, and my question is for Drew. What is the greatest and possibly most challenging aspect of being on the International Space Station? And what's your solution to overcome this obstacle? I would say living with these guys. <laughs> I think Ricky expected that. Um, you know, I would almost say there there aren't challenges. We've prepared for this for so long that uh, we're ready to be here and we're ready to work. Um, the challenge is being away from your loved ones. That's definitely the uh, uh, one of the greatest impacts on, on our lives. But the fulfillment that we have in the work that we do and being here and being able to observe the planet like we do is simply amazing. And um, so the challenges are few. I would say the big one is, is just being away from home and being away from our loved ones. But uh, it's just an amazing opportunity for all of us, and we're thankful to be here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christina, and I'm from Oakland Community College, and my question is for Ricky. 
If in your lifetime you somehow came into contact with other life forms, how would you go about communicating with them and what would you ask them? <laughs> Well, yeah, you're assuming we speak the same language, um, but I think we would speak the same language of science and mathematics, and I think that would be the questions, uh, uh, if we do come across another life form, uh, just w how they arrived uh, to, to the technology that they would have, um, uh, and you know, how, how they utilize science and mathematics to, to help grow their society. I think that'd be a really fascinating question. And what would you ask them? <laughs> the obvious ones take me to your leader, but uh, but um, you know I, I I would I would ask them about their home planet. I mean I, I think uh, that our view up here, everyone goes home. I think changed after looking at your home planet from from our from our perspective. We're very fortunate that way, and I think I would ask them about their home planet and what it was like and what they meant. The questions you are asking us, I think, would be very similar to the questions I would ask them. Thank you. I am Hannah from Lake Orion High School, and my question is for Drew. What classes should I take now if I wanted to be an astronaut? I think right now, if you want to be an astronaut, you need to take classes based in uh, mathematics and science, uh, engineering, technology. Those are all very critical to the work that we do now. I think in the future, uh, people with any degree will be working in space, and so you could you just space workers as we as we uh, achieve the ability to live in space and have larger numbers of people in space or off our planet, maybe on the surface of the moon, maybe on the surface of Mars, there will be greater need for much broader category of uh, of people uh, workers that are in those places. But right now, the key focus is on uh, mathematics and science and engineering and technology uh, classes. Hi, I am Berenice from Lake Orion High School, and my question is for Ricky. During your stay in space, what is one thing you miss about Earth the most, aside from friends and family? Weather. Uh, I think that's a, a pretty easy one. Um, you, you, the, 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 I, just the sound of thunder, uh, the smell of ozone from lightning, uh, the breeze in your face. Um, just uh, just changes in weather. The weather's always the same on the International Space Station, and we get to look down at the weather occurring on our planet, and uh, I think uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing that and experiencing that again when I get back home. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nina. I'm from Oakland Community College, and my question is for Drew. What is your greatest hope for humanity's future in space exploration, and what will it take to achieve that? I think my greatest hope for humanity is that we learn to live off of the planet Earth. I think that's important for us. I think that if you look at the history of our planet, the changes it's gone through, um, the fact that the dinosaurs are no longer here, um, that, that is a challenge for us. We need to learn to live off of this planet. And I hope that in years to come <laughs> that we will achieve that goal and uh, eventually move out into this uh, solar system and beyond so that we can explore space, live in space, and allow humans to continue on because I don't believe that uh, as a species on planet Earth, uh, we will be able to go on forever just because of the risks of uh, having, uh, we're single fault tolerant with our planet right now. One place to live and only one home. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Emma from Lake Orion High School and my question is for Ricky. If there was a soundtrack that came with watching the Earth and space as you orbit, what would it be? <laughs> you know, we kind of have one. Um, we each loaded a, uh, a small iPod with uh, a lot of our favorite music, and uh, you'll see people listening to music a lot up here when they're looking out the window, when they're exercising, or even while we're working. So I think much like on Earth, we, we would each have our, our own soundtrack of our own personal uh, music selection, and, um, um, and fortunately we're able to carry that with us. I am Derek from Lake Orion High School, and my question is for Drew. 
How much time and devotion did you put into your schooling in order to have a career you have today? Uh, well, I went to school for 12 more years after high school. I first started at Oakland Community College for three years and then went on to Purdue University for three more to uh, achieve my bachelor's degree, stayed for another two for a master's degree, and then four years in Canada at Queen's University for my PhD. So basically double the time I spent in high school. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hello, by the way, thank you for your service to our country. I am Helena from Oakland Community College and my question is for Ricky. If you could see anything you wanted while in space, what is the one thing you would like to see and why? Uh, wow, um, you know, we get to see a lot of the earth while we're, while we're traveling over it. Um, I, I, I think I would, it's kind of an idealistic view, but I'd like to, I'd like to see the earth as peaceful, to be as peaceful as it looks from above. Um, uh, the, the earth is a remarkable planet. It's incredibly beautiful. Uh, Drew, like Drew said, we spend a lot of our time thinking about, boy, I'd like to be there and I'd like to be there. Um, but you know, intellectually that it's, it's not everything that's happening on our planet is, is beautiful. And, um, peaceful and uh, to to have the earth be like we see it uh, would be a, would be a remarkable thing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave from Lake Orion High School and I have a question from Oliver for Drew. How has collaborating with other astronauts with different backgrounds and cultures changed your perspective on the world? Well, I think that's a key component of the work that we do up here, that this is an international space station. We do train and work with astronauts from all over the world. And uh, I think that allows us, each of us as astronauts, to have a broader view of humanity, um, understand that our differences are oftentimes petty and uh, that all challenges can be overcome. If you just look at how magnificent the International Space Station is, how large it is, the type of work that we do up here, and the fact that we've been living here uh, in space for 18 years uh, nonstop, and the Russians on their space stations before that with international partners participating, um, you realize that uh, it really is an asset to have those um, multiple uh, nations participating in multiple co cultures involved in the work that we do here. In fact, it's key to our success. Thank you. I am Megan from Oakland Community College, and I have a question from Robin for Ricky. Why haven't we been to the moon for decades, and why are we going back? Yeah, I, I think about that question a lot, and uh, I don't really have a good answer for you uh, because I, I, I'm old enough to remember the tail end of the Apollo program, and, and I thought by now uh, we'd be we'd be out in the solar system. Uh, but what we do is hard. Uh, it's it, we it, the Apollo program. We made it look easy, but we we what we do is hard. Uh, everything's going to take incremental steps. Um, and, and frankly, we, we live in a democracy, and uh, I think if the American people wanted us on the moon, we would be on the moon. And so uh, I, we have a lot of support for our space program, and uh, if people, need to, people need to let people let, let folks know what they, what they want from their space program. I would like to see it again in my lifetime, um, for sure. Good morning. I'm Marion Janopoulos, a superintendent in Lake Orion. First of all, I can't tell you how incredible this opportunity is for all of us who are here today. Our students are just thrilled to be here. We are most appreciative and thank you so much, especially that you wore the right shirt the first time for Lake Orion High School and then were able to put on your Oakland Community College shirt afterwards. We wish you a very safe travel home. We look forward to you coming back to Earth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Well, thank you all for showing up. Uh, great, a big shout out to uh, Lake Ori and all my family and friends there. And uh, of course, OCC gave me a great start on my education, and I'm proud to be a graduate of both of those schools. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, best of luck in all that you endeavor to do, and keep following us on uh, nasa.gov. Stay tuned into what we're doing, and hopefully, you can become a part of this great space station or whatever exploration we're doing in space when it comes time. So, thanks again. Take care, everybody. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from Oakland Community College and Lake Orion High School. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.